This clip is brought to you by Sport Wheels Warehouse, Nova Scotia's largest baseball and hockey training center. Indoor batting cages, hockey shooting gallery, camps, corporate events, birthdays, and more. All right, Alex, we are going. I don't know how many times I started this podcast and the mics weren't going, like the cameras weren't going, so I'm always paranoid, but we're going. How are you? Good, man. Good to be home. Good. Talk a little bit closer into the mic. Sorry, you're good there. Is that yeah. good? Yeah, you're good there. All right. Let's try to go this whole podcast without saying the C word. Yeah. CV, CV19. Yeah. It's uh, it's in everyone's mind. And I said in the intro before the podcast starts, like these podcasts are meant to be like distractions for people just to kind of relax. Don't even worry about it. And just for sure. I said that you'd have a bunch of stories. So you, you got to deliver. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I was looking forward to being uh, on here. You know, I was watching you guys from the very beginning and uh, I love the coverage you're doing to uh, the local sports and I get it. the local athletes. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. It. Yeah. We were looking forward to like getting the interview in with you, like when you came to Scotiabank Arena and then we I were know. like, we should mic them up too, but then they already got the mic'd up video. So at least you got yeah. the mic'd up version of it done. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It, it was, was wicked. Uh, it was cool to see, but yeah, I was definitely looking forward to that game, you know, coming home and playing in front of family and friends, but yeah, it is what it is. The whole world's on pause and it's just the way it is right now. So let me ask you a question about, well, first of all, like you just got to look forward to next year. I know we just had that conversation. Yeah. Hopefully everything's done by like August, September. So next year, you know, you can play in front of your family and friends. Um, the whole mic'd up video, how did they put the mic on you during the game? Because we're trying to figure out how to do that for the, the junior and senior league. Yeah. So how did they do it for you? They, uh, they tied it like the mic actually tied through my, it was wrapped around my kidney pads. Like it was like taped up i don't know it was like in a little it was in a little like oh, yeah keep going i'll show i'll yeah. show you what we have it looks like this yeah so that was just wrapped around my shoulder pad like strap and then they taped it like right against the sh the kidney pad oh yeah so it was just like just like jimmy rigged it up but it wasn't bad like it was bouncing around a little bit but so that's what i'm nervous about like someone with old hack right there yeah. and then it breaks like those are pricey that's what i, I don't know. know i know good stuff but no, it was cool to get that in for sure. So talk about, you know, the, the whole experience. Any, I, I said also in the intro, anytime, uh, you know, your first year pro doing something that you absolutely love must be a, a dream come true. So I guess just talk about, you know, maybe your first day in Philly or, or maybe getting drafted yeah. maybe back when you're on Brock and you, maybe some scouts were interviewing you. Maybe talk about the first step of becoming a pro lacrosse player and when you thought that that dream was going to become a reality. Cause okay. it is. Well, um, I guess if we're going to do that, we should just start at the beginning. Give her. So, I got nothing but time. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'd say I first started playing. Um, my first year of lacrosse was novice. Yeah. Uh, my best friend growing up, Luke Smeltzer. He. I know. Plays, oh, I know his dad and Luke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Mike. He plays. Uh, Luke plays at RIT, which is a Division three program in the states. Okay. Really, like it's a factory down there. They wow. produce a bunch of NLL players. So a good school there. Yeah. He was playing and uh, got me into the game, and you know it was just. I know you played, you, you can uh, relate to this. It was just fell in love with it right from the beginning. We were young. We were always had our stick in our hands around the neighborhood, you know? Um, so yeah, I started playing novice, uh, for Southwest. Okay. We, uh, kind of dominated growing up. I think I, I, I don't think I lost my first game until Bantam. So <laughs> we had, uh, some guys that was around, that were on those teams were like, um Shane Bowers was on the team Mike O'Leary Cam Lee uh Noah Bald played at Cornell that like, makes sense I remember at the Jordan Boyd tournament Shane was playing there and he was talking about you okay that makes sense now yeah. I didn't know who, who you were at the time yeah but he's like yeah, I got this buddy and he was talking about you then now that makes sense okay yeah so we okay. were all played together growing up and okay. we had a good squad and everything but uh yeah and then uh I played on the provincial team through Wee. And uh, we got to go to nationals in Whitby. I'm not sure if you ever did that. Uh, we went to Burnaby, BC. We played oh, yeah, yeah. nationals. Cool. But yeah, so I went to Whitby three or four times. Sick. And that sort, of, that sort of gave me a taste of what was out there for lacrosse, you know, because you grow up playing around here and you don't really think about, you're just sort of... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's Well, let me ask you a question cuz yeah. my first experience going to a national tournament was uh, an ego check. Like I was a good player yeah, around here. Exactly. Well, what was your reaction going to That's a national? That's a good way to put it because it was like, okay, I'm one of the top guys on Team Nova Scotia. Yeah. And in the league around here, but I, I'm asking myself, would I even make Team Ontario? Would I make yeah. Team BC, you know? And that sort of drove me to 
keep working at it because it was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's okay to be a good player in our league here, but what does that mean on the big scale if I want to take this to the next level? Yeah. And so I was always, you know, working on my game. I just, I just love to play. So I was hitting the wall, shooting in my backyard, you know, um, but anyway, so played up through midget and then played my first year of junior in Halifax. Okay, for Southwest? Played for Southwest. Okay. We won the championship that year, which was a four-peat for our team. You won four junior championships? Uh, I a- didn't. I won one because oh. I only played one year, but that was a four-peat for those guys. So guys like Jake Norton was our goalie, Sam Martin was a captain, Sam, yeah. Nate Allen, um, Brian Huey was on that team, Luke Smeltzer. Yeah. We had a really good team, yeah. obviously. And so I played my first year of junior there, won the championship. And then that summer, I got the chance to try out for Team Canada under 17. But how, did, how did that opportunity come about? Like, you got an email so, or a call? So Chet Konechny, do you know Chet? Yeah, he plays for the Thunderbirds, right? Yeah, yeah he yeah. was the technical director of Lacrosse Nova Scotia at the time. Yeah. He was running, like, a high-performance program, and I was... I was part of that. Just it was a way to keep playing through the winter. We were in the gym and stuff. Cool. And he had said to me, you know, Alex, you got you're a good player. You have some, uh, you have some talent and some. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Skill. Uh, yeah, more just um, persistence, consistency. Anyways, whatever. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you, you should try and play in Ontario, right? Yeah. And uh, so then I, my dad actually saw online uh, there was tryouts for this under 17 Team Canada box. Okay. And they were going to play at the at the World Championship in Onondaga. Where's that? That's a native reserve in New York. Wow. That's where the Thompson brothers are from and okay. stuff. Yeah. Cool. And so I was the age group to, I was 17 at the time. So it was like the perfect opportunity, you know, my whole, my whole career growing up, I was like, would I be good enough to play with those guys? Yeah. And this was sort of the, the telltale, right? Yeah. So I went up with a buddy of mine, Connor Aquano, who ended up coming to Brock with me and being my roommate there. Let me, let me stop Brock. you. Were you a little nervous going into it or were you confident? Were you prepared? Like I mean, what was your mindset going think, into that? I think I was, I was like ready, you know, like I was like, this is yeah. sort of my opportunity. Yeah. And I wanted to play at the highest level I could. Yeah. The coaches of that team were Josh Sanderson, uh, Bill Greer. Josh Sanderson, they, those two now coach for the Seals. Yeah. Sean Allen, who ended up being my coach in St. Catharines. Like, NLL legends, right? And yeah. You have the best guys in the game assessing players, you know? And uh, so, yeah. So, I went up there. I was fortunate enough to make that team, which was really the the door to get me to Ontario. And... Um, Sean Allen, who was a coach of that team, was the head coach and GM of St. Catharines. And then he brought me up to try out for the St. Catharines Junior A Athletics. Yeah. And, you know, there was, I think there were six guys on that team, Canada team, six or seven that were also St. Catharines guys. Interesting. And they were all 99s and 98s. I'm a 98. Okay. And that was sort of a rebuilding year for that junior A team. So yeah. I was lucky that I got to go right up there and play junior A lacrosse. Oh, wow. Right? Which is, you know, a lot of guys who are coming from Nova Scotia, it's tough to jump right to junior A because you don't grow up in Ontario. You don't have, like, you don't have any reputation these other guys you're competing against they've been team ontario their whole life coached by the same guys their whole life so you're not going to go in there and just take a guy's spot right was there anyone looking at you like who's this guy coming in was anyone just like not giving not like bullying you but was there anyone looking at you like who are you (laughs) yeah i think so i mean um the i was still in high school that year because i went up for my grade 12 so it was my second year junior yeah it was the summer before my first year of university and I, ha- I was finishing school up. I got to finish a little early high school because yeah. they just made it work for me because I was going up. Beauty of sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah which was sick. But <laughs> um, So I hadn't even been at training camp. I went to the tryouts in March, and then I hadn't been at any training camp, and I went up and went right into a game. And, like, I'm showing up on the bus, and these guys are like, who are, who are you, man? Like, <laughs> Really? Yeah. But, like, And you're still, like, even-headed. You're still, like, fine. You're like, I'm just going to go in and do what I do. You're still not well, worried about it. that's the thing. It. Like, growing up, I was an offensive guy around here. Yeah. And uh, I went up there, and they didn't – I remember on the game sheet, my very first game, they have – defense and forwards yeah. and then they had pace in the middle with arrows both ways <laughs> that's a, they that's didn't know amazing. either right <laughs> so 
it, it was sort of just like, okay, let's see what this kid can do. So, um, yeah, my first year I was playing, uh, I was playing offense and, um, then I, my second year I was like half offense, half defense. And then I just transitioned to defense because the coaches there, um, they saw, okay, yeah, I could be an offensive guy, but I, you know, I was the guy that was setting picks and swinging the ball and making sure that, that we don't get fast break. Yeah. Whereas on defense, I could have a bit more of an impact. Yeah. Because, you know, the old guys on my team are Alex Simmons goes to Denver University, Carter Zavitz, Princeton, Jake McNabb now playing for the Mammoth, Jeff Wittig playing for the Mammoth, like Division One and all, like these guys are legit, right? Mm -hmm. Like coming from what we've played, it's, it's a tough jump, right? Yeah. But, you know, I think for the lacrosse around here, I think the top few guys on every junior team in our league – could play junior lacrosse in Ontario but you do need that time to work your way up and adapt your game to what kind of player you're going to be at that level right yeah like my roommate Connor Aquano he went up and played uh, junior B yeah and right away he lit it up he was lighting up junior B but you know as an O guy there's only seven O guys on a team and you look at the guys on our team in St. Catharines it's tough it's yeah. tough to get a spot right that's yeah. just the way it is but if you get up there in your early years, you have time to build that reputation, learn the game more. You know, my first two years were honestly just figuring it out. Yeah. Like until my third year when I started to play. You can move the mic. You can move it. <laughs> there you go. All good. My, uh, my third year in the winter, I started to play in the ALL. What's the, what? The, what? the ALL is basically it's trying to be like the AHL. Oh, sorry. NLL. Okay. Okay. So okay. it's all guys trying to make, trying to make it to the NLL. Okay. But it's only like games on the weekends and oh, yeah. whatnot. Actually, I played for the St. Catherine Shockwave. We won it last year. Won the championship, the ALL. Congrats. Yeah. And a couple guys, uh, like I played against Warren Hill in that league. Oh wow. Uh, Corey Becker. Yeah. He plays for the Thunderbirds. He was on my team. Like tons of guys who were yeah. in the ALL are now in the NLL. Mm. But you know. Anyways, back to where we were going. It's just like when you're in Ontario and you have that opportunity, I was playing full full year, you know, and we just don't have that here. Yeah. And that's the difference, right? I remember when I was playing around here, I don't know what it was, midget, maybe junior. And I remember I got like 10 goals in one game and I came back to my car and I was like, dad, like, what do you think? And he's like, Justin, like you, if you could do that in Ontario or BC, maybe I'd be impressed. Yeah. But don't, don't <clears> let it get to your head here. It's fine. Like, yeah. No, it's not a big deal. Yeah. And I remember that. And then that was right after. That was right before I went to that national tournament in Burnaby. I'm pretty sure. And then, like I said, that was just the kind of check of the skill level that you think you have compared to what these guys have in Ontario or BC and other yeah. parts of the country. I shouldn't just say BC and Ontario, but yeah. it's. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it, it's just it's more consistent there's there's a lot more guys that can compete with you yeah you know it's it's a real like it's a real yeah. it's a real deal up there yeah. and you know I was fortunate in St. Catharines I had great coaching like you know I had great coaching around here as well but um when you go up there you have like my coach Ian Rubel who also is my defensive coach in Philly he coached me he was our defensive coach in junior okay Sean Allen was the head coach and GM when I first got up there. He was the guy who really, like, pulled me in. Yeah. And then uh, Steve Toll took over from him. Steve Toll played, I think, 14 years in the NLL, was an all-star. Yeah. You know, these guys are the highest level. And learning from them, like, my game just took off. If you had to pinpoint one guy in the most valuable lesson i know it's hard but you're naming a lot of names like yeah if you thought there was one guy that gave you like that one lesson that turned you into an nll player who would it be and what was the skill set do you think i know it's tough that's a tough question because i feel like it was everything about being in st Catharines that made me the player i am today you know a story that i like to tell is my first i think it's like my third practice in st Catharines when i'm still 18 years old still sort of in awe of being up there and yeah. and how serious it is. I walk into the rink and I go to use the bathroom and Mark Steinhaus is just hitting the wall. <laughs> He's playing wall ball in there and Mark Steinhaus is a legend, played for the Bandits. I remember the first lacrosse magazine I ever got, he was on the cover. So that's like a guy that's like an idol for people in the lacrosse world, you know? And that sort of just made me realize, okay, this is the right place. Yeah. But I think the one guy, I mean... 
there's so many guys that I I would like to owe it to, you know. But yeah. I think Ian Rubel has had a huge impact on my career because he was my defensive coach when I really made the switch, and he was the guy that was saying, "Look, if you can if you can learn how to play our system and you know just get comfortable on playing defense, you can you can make a career out of this." and and uh, he's now my coach in Philly, so he was a big part of getting me there, you know. Yeah. He believed in me and trusted me to come there. And Sick. Yeah. So. so what's the draft process like in the NLL? How does that work? Is it So I went to the I went to the Combine. Oh, what's what's a combine like in, in the NLL? Yeah, so the Combine's a little bit uh it's not it's not quite like the NHL. Yeah, I was gonna combine. say, are they plugging your nose and yelling at you on the bike? What are they doing to you? It was a one day what, it was a one day try, or like one day we played games. In oh, so Oakville. you're in gear. Yeah. Okay. It was okay. just the morning. We had a 30 minute practice. Yeah. And then we had, you played a game. Like I was on the blue team. There's four teams. You yeah. played a game against like the black team, had a break, played another game. That was it. Where was the combine? It was at the, the track in Oakville. It's where the Toronto Rock okay. um, practice facility. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, I went there. You had to pay to sign up. I think it was like 300 bucks. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's got to change, Commission, if you're listening to this. Yeah. Come on, buddy. 300 bucks. So It's a lot of money right now. Yeah. So um, I hadn't really spoken to any NLL teams. So I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get drafted. You know, my coaches had said, you're a good player. You're going to get picked. But yeah. like, I hadn't actually spoken to anyone. So I was like, I got to go to the combine, make sure I get noticed and everything yeah. let me ask you this do they feed you put you in a hotel or anything no it's just one day so that you, 300 you get, bucks is just holy fuck get there for one day get there at 8 a.m we were done by four no lunch no food nothing no bring your own lunch oh come on yeah and that's Bush jersey League. jersey that's it and you got to give the jersey back or do you keep, no, the jersey? keep the jersey still <laughs> come on yeah <laughs> i know but uh yeah so but the one thing about the combine which is why you pay the money is that all the GMs and coaches are there and you get to have meetings with okay. them, right? So okay. there's a sheet and it says like, they'll write your name down at, in a time slot if they want to meet with you. So yeah. I think the practice was at 10. I get off the floor, check the sheet. I have a meeting with Halifax at like 1030. Oh, really? Who'd you meet with if so, you don't let me ask him? Yeah, I met with, uh, it was Mike Akersey, yeah, Chad Culp. Yeah. who's the O coach, okay. and Roger Chrysler, who's the D coach, okay. who also coached me with the Shockwave. That's sick. So they were the first meeting, and like obviously, you know, being a hometown Halifax kid, I was like looking forward to it and stuff. And they just sort of ask you the, the classic combine questions. What type of player are you? What type of player do you see yourself being in the NLL? You know, where do you think you're going to go? Blah, blah, blah. And that was my first one, so I was sort of didn't really know what to expect. And then 30 minutes later... I met with Colorado and Steve Toll, who was my head coach, was a scout for them. Cool. And so he was sitting there and, and have a meeting with them. And they're like, yeah, we're, we're going to take you in the second round if you're still there. And that to me was like, whoa, like I didn't know where I was going to go coming in. Right. Yeah. So when they told me that, it was like, OK, wow, maybe maybe I am going to go like higher than I thought or whatever. And then I met, I had a couple more interviews. I met with Rochester and New York and they all sort of said the same, the same thing. Yeah. But Philly, like Ian Rubel was there and he said to me, you know, we're going to take you at 20 if you're still there. And so that's where I ended up getting picked. So they were telling the truth, but that's sort of how that all, that's cool. That all worked. Yeah. I was waiting. Halifax picked, I think 14. Oh, did they? Yeah. And they and picked I, Peterson? I think they, no, Peterson went fifth or he was their first, I think they picked uh, Trevor Smith. Oh yeah. Defender. And so that was, I was kind of looking at that one and then the 20th pick came and, you know, Philly, like obviously deep down, uh, I was kind of hoping for Halifax, yeah. but really Philly was, was the best location for me. I think, you know, I got to come in right away and, and have a spot and. You know, our coaches in Philly are incredible. Paul Day, he was the 2003 Coach of the Year. He was a head coach at age 29. So the guy's wow. just an absolute wizard. Like, it's uh, it's pretty cool to be around. Our offensive coach, Tracy Koluski, is in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And it's not, the Hall of Fame in the NLL is like 
12 guys. Is it? Yeah. The Hall of Fame in the NHL is not... I didn't even know there was a Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's, it's like, really elite, so... Is Mike in there? The, are the a head coach for Halifax? Do you I, know who the 12 guys are? I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. Jordan Mills, our Thunderbirds guy, was telling me that he's a legend and he's giving me his stats yeah, and they were yeah. impressive. So I was just he wondering. He is a legend. He's a St. Kitts guy as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when you get drafted, don't lie. I'm, I'm sure you're Googling right away where the best Philly cheesesteak is in Philly. <laughs> where is the best Philly cheesesteak? Uh, I mean, I've had a few. They're all pretty good to me. You know, I'm not too picky, but uh, I know Pat's is good. Yeah. Gino's. Those are like the those are like the two like that go head to head. Have you had both of them? Uh, I honestly I've had both of them, but I couldn't tell you which one was which. So, know, like, what are you looking for on a Philly cheese stick? Because I've had like maybe one, but yeah. I made it myself. Like, what are the yeah. key consistencies to a good Philly cheese stick? I like uh, I like onions on it. Okay, crispy so, or like, how do you like the onions? Yeah, just like fried up, fried up. Yeah, and then uh, just some cheese. Like you can get provolone, you can get American cheddar. I heard you can get like they, uh, they put like Swiss, whiz. Or whiz, yeah, yeah, which. I don't mind that, but I think I'd rather like a provolone or something. Okay, interesting. But yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good after the bar snack for sure. It's like kind of like their donair, I guess. Oh yeah, I never thought of it that that's, way. That's how I would, that's how I would put it. What's it like playing at the uh, Wells Fargo? It's super cool, man. Just gotta check this out. Okay, what's the out? Is it cool? Yeah, it's super cool. Like it's a great building, and they treat us super well there. You know, it feels like you're on the flyers or whatever. So. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. The fans in Philly, you know, everyone knows the fans in Philly. They're they don't like you if you're losing, but they love you if you're winning. Yeah. So I mean, that's what we expect. Yeah, as a team, you know, you you expect that anyway. So the fans have been awesome, and the whole experience has been surreal. That's sick. Yeah, you guys, have you ever like had any crossings with like Philly or the or uh, I mean the hockey team or the basketball team? Like, you ever run into Giroux in the hallway or anything like that? Not really, honestly. Because uh, your schedules are so different, I guess. Yeah, the last the last weekend we were there, maybe the weekend before, um, the Flyers played a one o'clock game, and yeah. we played a four o'clock game or something. They got the turf over that quick. Yeah, they do it in like an hour. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Those guys are impressive if you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh I saw Konechny walking out with oh, yeah. his uh with his girl. <laughs> right on. He's doing all right. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, but that that was the only He's guy. doing all right. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Good man. Yeah. So talk let's talk about the first game, you know. Uh every time I've asked you, you've said you've had no nerves about anything for your lacrosse career. So like first game in the yeah. NLL, are you what are you doing? Taking a pregame nap? What's the pregame meal? Are you walking to the rink? Are you cabin? Okay. Are you busting? How are you, are you Ubering? Yeah. How you like how talk about the day? So what time did you wake up? The very first game was in our very first game of my NL career was in Georgia and I actually got scratched that game. Oh no. So that was a bit of a letdown, but anyway, how do they let you know you're being scratched at practice or no, it's late. It's like, so how the day works is like, wake up, shoot around in the morning. Yeah. So that's like an hour and you can kind of get a sense if you're in or out because we're doing line stuff there, but they don't actually, they didn't actually tell me until like after our first warm up. So we come in after first warm up and the lineups posted. Oh, so you, wait a second, sorry. So you warmed up like to play the game? Yeah. Oh, in front of wow. And then yeah. you, okay, like okay. light warm ups. So okay, you go sorry. with your helmets and gloves yeah, like yeah, an yeah. hour before. Yeah. And then they t- and then they just put the lineup out and then they told me. But okay. Um, you know, it was like you're a rookie. That's sort of you gotta you gotta earn your earn your keep. You know, a yeah. lot of those guys, pretty much every other defender, every other defender on the team was on the team last year and played games last year. So. I sort of expected it, um, but you know Georgia traveling. I remember I saw Lyle Thompson in the airport. Oh yeah, and I saw him, and I'm like, kind of, kind of in awe, you know. But then in the back of my mind, I'm like, I gotta play against this guy tomorrow. <laughs> Might have know? to fight this guy tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys are like legends, you know. Yeah. So it, that that was cool. But then you know I was a little disappointed I didn't play that first game. Yeah. Then they let me know I was in the next game, like the week leading up okay cool um and that was calgary so oh in that, calgary in calgary cool. at the at the saddle dome Sick. so that was cool and you know same thing wake up friday night we flew in we practiced um at like a practice facility stay in downtown calgary wake up shoot around at the saddle dome Sick. get ready and my first game i think there was thirteen thousand people there <laughs> and i just remember like 
I really wasn't nervous. You ever play in front of a crowd like that? No, nothing 13, like that. 13, nothing like that. Maybe a couple thousand. Like, yeah. But yeah, like just looking around, I just remember like just smiling and just being like top of the world. This is it. Right. Like I'm here, you know? And I think like you get a little nervous, like before your first shift, like you're like anxious to get out there. But I really wasn't that nervous because I think with, with the way I play, it's like a lot of my game is just instinct. You know, when you're on the floor, like, as a defender in the NLL, it's all just quick decisions. Yeah. You don't have a whole lot of time to think about it. So it's not like as an O guy where it's like, oh, I, I better hit my shots tonight or I hope I don't drop the ball. Like, it's a little more like once you get to that level, like, you're there, you know? Yeah. What, so. do you, what do you think your biggest skill set is in the NLL? You're a defender. You're great at it. What do you think separates you from the guy that's almost about to be in the NLL to a guy like you who's in the NLL and, and is making a career out of it? What do you think that key switch is that you have that maybe some yeah. other people are trying to get? Because well, there's going to be a lot of kids listening to this trying to... Yeah, for you know, sure. I mean, again, I was fortunate with my situation that my defensive coach of three years in junior is my defensive coach in Philadelphia in the NLL, right? So what did he teach you? Like so what's... we run the same system yeah. in, in St. Catharines that we run in Philly. So I've played 40, 50 games in that system. There's guys who have been on the team a couple of years that I, I'm i more familiar with the system than them. So mm. I was lucky in that sense, again, that there was no real learning curve. Yeah. It was more just adjusting to the speed and the physicality, which you expect at any level as you move up, right? Yeah. But I think what sort of, I guess, what makes the difference for me through my whole career is just, you know, learning, you know, learning from the guys around you. When I first went up there, I was like a deer in the headlights, you know, didn't know what the systems were. I wasn't really sure how they played the game up there, you know, the even just in practice, like they're like, oh, we're doing the the bandage drill. <laughs> and I'm just there like at the back of the line, kind of like, <laughs> oh, and it's just drills. You know, it's like, it's like them doing the, the horseshoe in hockey. It's drills they've done since they were a kid. Right. Yeah. But I think just a big part of what got me to where I am now is just being able to learn and adapt and, and figure out how to get more floor time, what I needed to do to, get work my way up on the depth chart you know it's all just little things like every time you get an opportunity i think you have to make the most of it to keep moving up right yeah so you get a guy who's out of the lineup and now you're on pk1 you go in there and play well maybe next game you're on pk1 again you know it was even with even with my the start of the season the nll with me i started the year scratched second played the second game of the year and I played every game since, yeah. you know, I played my way in, yeah. but I think just, just obviously, you know, there's the cliche things, you know, working hard and, and keeping your stick in your hand, you know, you played the game. It's, it's a game that you can get better at if you want to put the time in. Right. Yeah. And, and, um, if you're an athlete, you can, you can like, it comes easy. Right. But yeah, I think just, just learning from the other guys around me and just always being coachable and, um, that's a good point, being coachable. Yeah, that was it's a good it's a skill set that I don't think you can teach. You just kind of have to have it. Yeah, but if if you want it, you know, if if yeah. you realize, okay, I'm doing this and it's not working or the coaches are telling me to do this and you know, you got to you got to understand that you need to you need to earn it. And that's why when I say about these guys who are playing junior in Ontario and guys from here that want to make that jump, yeah. You need to get there early enough that you can learn yeah. and you can go through that learning curve and grow and realize what your role is like guys like Jordan McKenna. Yeah. Um, he played junior B for Orangeville for a couple of years, which is a factory. Did he? Yeah. He played junior B for like the moose has guy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Really? And I didn't then he know played that. Junior A this summer for them and won a Minto, which is a national championship. No way. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. Um, same with Liam McGrath. He's over there now. Keaton Brown. There's a bunch of guys who are, are in that Orangeville factory. Cool. And it's the same thing that St. Catherine saw with me. It's like, okay, this guy has some potential. He clearly just needs to learn the game a bit more. And um, I think there's lots of guys in our league that can do that. And another guy that comes to mind when I talk about that is Brian Huey. You know Brian? No. 
So I know the name. He played for Southwest. He's a couple years older than me. He played uh, at Limestone Division Two. Okay. Won a national championship. So it's a that's a high level of lacrosse in the states. Yeah. He got he made Team Canada men's field. Okay. This fall they did a a showcase against America, uh, the U.S. Yeah. He's from Nova Scotia. He's from he's from Halifax. Okay. And like that's a huge deal. Like I don't think people realize how big of a deal that actually is. But and then after that, he got a tryout with the Thunderbirds. Oh, that kid. Yeah. Okay, I do yeah. know. I saw him play this year. Someone was telling and me. And he about has him. never yeah, yeah, played yeah. a game of junior lacrosse outside of Nova Scotia, and he got a tryout in wow. the NLL 